eight-year assault on your Second Amendment freedoms has come to a crashing end. I like taking the guns early. Take the guns first. Go through due process. Well, I said, go fuck yourself. Then I flew well, you're good. I kill a man. I would enjoy myself. You can't disguise evil eyes. to go home now. We have to have peace. So go home. We love you. You're very special. But go home and go home in peace. The demonstrators who infiltrated the Capitol have defiled the seat of American democracy. You do not represent our country. And to those who broke the law, you will pay. What's up, everybody? All right. Happy Wednesday. <laughs> so far, I think I'm okay. I haven't gotten any... I haven't talked about anything that YouTube is going to be mad about. So it should be good for right now. We have Gerald in the chat and tactical nugs and i asked gerald a question hopefully he'll get back to me on that maybe he stepped away from the computer but what's up gerald what's up brenda how you doing he probably had to let the dogs out oh yeah gotta let those dogs out so i decided to do it on uh stinger two or poison stinger two for a couple of reasons uh for one it's got more of a subscriber base and i kind of want to talk to people who follow my stuff maybe well, definitely the ones that watch me all the time. Y'all are diehards. And I love diehards. <laughs> I'm a diehard half the time. 
And uh, but I also wanted to address some people who maybe watch me here and there that might have at least subscribed to the second channel, uh, but maybe not. Rare breed triggers are in stock. Oh my god, seriously, they're still doing that. I need to find out a story. Anybody got a story on rare breed? I might actually click on that real quick and go to their site, huh? You get three chances to make a purchase. Wow. Still selling rare breed triggers. Last time I heard that that uh, order was upheld of a cease and desist. Just so y'all, you know, anytime I talk about the coronavirus, I'm talking about the beer. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do Cerveza Bug. I'm not going to do any of that. So what I wanted to address is uh, trying to figure out where to go forward with the YouTube channels. And ever since the main channel got deleted and I, they haven't ever gotten back to me on if, you know, they're going to reinstate or not, which I would imagine, you know, just assume it's not coming back. I've been contemplating the evening catch up. I did the evening catch up. Well, because of the morning muster, and then I wanted to do something, too, you know, because the morning muster was kind of not happening at the time. 24 hour. What? No. You, you said, you said, bring it up to like a simmer, which is like at a boil, basically, or a close boil for a certain amount of time, and then put it on medium or low heat for 24 hours. I'm pretty sure that's what you said. I looked in my text messages, and the text messages between me and you are all gone, except for the first one that I had said. So I don't know if you deleted the text messages or what happened there, but they're all gone. But I'm pretty sure it was bring it up there, and then I was all freaking out that it was, you know, simmering for like two hours, I think it was at the time. Anyway. So... I don't know. We got to figure out a different thing to do. Maybe not as many days. There's a lot of channels that only do it once a week, you know. There's some channels that do it every day. So I, I don't know. I'm, I'm coming. I'm coming to the realization that I need to re figure out a different thing to do if I'm going to do anything on YouTube. Now, if the channel was going somewhere. Or it had some sort of uh, chance of going somewhere. Maybe. But let's face facts. There ain't no chance any of the new channels that I created are going to go anywhere. So I have been thinking. What do I want to do? There you go. How do you, Yeah, how long do you keep it on high before you turn? Thank you, Riddle, for saying that question a little bit better. So I believe this Friday, or at least, well, maybe not Friday, it depends. Either Friday or the finale of the Rittenhouse trial, the verdict, or, you know, lack thereof if it's a hung jury. Because day two <laughs> came and went, and uh, still no, still no uh, verdict, which means there are definitely some holdouts on this, and there's been a whole bunch of back and forth on who those holdouts may be and what's what's the real you know over under on is he innocent or is he guilty and then you got the lawyers over there violating the constitutional rights and lying to the court and uh, not providing the defense with the same evidence they have in fact doctoring as clear evidence in fact they had gotten a screenshot, the people that I was watching got a screenshot of one of the uh, prosecutor's attorney's laptops, and it has an app on there that helps you shrink files, compressing them, and of course it makes the, so that you can, I guess, put it on a camera, on a phone, I mean. Um, so I'm curious about that. How long, okay. Yeah, not too many people. I don't know, the evening catch-up's been fun. We've had our moments. We made our pushes. We got a little bit hype there for a while, last year especially. 
There was a couple times where I'd have like 30 or 40 people in a live stream. People would donate, people would subscribe, people, you know, we had just gotten, I think, uh, the join feature. I remember getting the join feature and then getting demonetized in the same fucking day. <laughs> Couldn't believe it. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're going to change things up. So either... I won't I won't stop doing the catch up until Friday. Friday will be the last catch up. Or if the trial with Rittenhouse is still going on, we will finish it when that happens. And then we'll figure out something else. At least an hour. And then turn okay, at least an hour, but how how long is it maximum? We have it on for two hours. I I'm sure that'd be probably fine. Anyway, so yeah, if there was a, if I thought this was going to go somewhere, I'd keep doing it. I'd fight it. But uh, we have diehards and I love the diehards and this is one of the reasons why I do it. But at the same time, you got to imagine it's been demonetized, which, you know, I was never making that much money anyway. The deletion of the channel and now I'm, I'm over there creating new channels to do this. I'm preaching to the choir when it comes to talking about the things that I'm getting stroke or you know strikes over. The whole you can't talk about the 2020 election. Well, you know, I I have tried to go around that. I have made it apparently clear in videos that I do not dispute what happened last year, right? But that doesn't matter to them and it is YouTube. So, I think joining the lawsuit is definitely something I should do. I will do. Uh, I have been thinking about looking into Rumble and Odyssey's live streaming capabilities. I'm not sure if you have to be somebody of importance or if you have to pay for it. If you have to pay for it, that would be something might consider. Uh, but is my kind of content going to reach anybody to make it worth it? Because any money that I put into this, I want to at least recoup. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, I should have done it at the year mark, but I didn't because I do like hanging out with y'all. So we just got to figure out something else we can do. Maybe canning. What did you can today? What did you prep today? Kind of thing. We could do that once a week. That'd be kind of fun. Definitely can't do it all every day. <laughs> YouTube are bitches. I, I agree. I agree, and I don't want to stop doing YouTube. That's not what I want to do. I just want to change the format. Talking news stories is just going to get me in trouble. You'll make a comeback, Rittenhouse. Someone's going to need to cover that shit show. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm sure we'll talk about it. In fact, I'm still going to be doing the Green Dragon. If you don't know about the Green da Dragon Tavern Chats, Riddle, can you drop a link in there? Or actually, I think you can just do Green Dragon. I don't know if this one has that. Or dragon. Hold on. Dragon. Maybe. Possibly. I don't know. We'll definitely do we'll definitely do the green dragon on Fridays. Because that's even better because y'all can hang out. Uh but this, I think the evening catch up part talking about the news, I don't know. Just need to rebrand it, redo something else. You, uh, let's see. You'll make a comeback? Yeah. Okay, I read that part. Okay. Sweet. So that's what's happening. I, As I said, I will stay until the Rittenhouse verdict or hung jury or whatever it is. It, I would imagine that'll happen before Friday. Oh, it finally, it finally went. Oh, no, that was you. That was Tactical Nugs. So definitely go subscribe to the Green Dragon. Uh, also, make sure you're subscribed to Irish USMC Vet because he does the morning muster, and I plan to continue to do that as long as he's inviting me, right? So as long as I, you know my welcome doesn't get worn out there, I'll be doing that with him. I think he gets his minutes back tomorrow, so I'll probably on uh, if he if he does it invites me, I probably will be on tomorrow. Couldn't get in live chat for a while. I fried my laptop playing Call of Duty. Shit, it sucked. Well, I've been working on the Green Dragon a little bit. Um, so you can definitely hang in chat. 
uh, and the people in the dragon should get your messages better now. I mean, it's a little bit of a workaround for me, but it's something I, I enjoy doing. So check me out on the Green Dragon on Fridays. Check me out on the Morning Muster on the morning shows. And then we'll figure out. Uh, I'll figure out. I, I just came to this realization today. I've been pondering it for a few days. But uh, I'll come up with a day that we always stream on at a time that we always stream on and we'll talk about either prepping canning or or something like that i love i love recipes i love canning different things fermenting things so yeah something like that as far as painting a five gallon bucket black and buying a five dollar toilet lid for it and considering that a prep nah man i ain't gonna i ain't gonna do that if you guys don't know how to make a five gallon bucket into a shitting bucket i don't y'all lost <laughs> i you know i'm not that smart in the prepping and i could figure that one out what's up irish we were just talking about you rittenhouse will be free all hell break loose my guess for tomorrow i don't know it depends on how many holdouts for which side i would imagine it's more people thinking i would imagine it's just me speculating but i would imagine there are more on the jury that think he is innocent than guilty and i think that the prosecution and the judge and even the defense are all incompetent and i say that because i've been watching these other lawyers in a discord well it's not a discord call i guess a stream yard call and they're all talking about it um and they're smarter people than I am. So I'm going to assume that they're correct in a lot of things. And I mean, it sounds correct. But I mean, you have the prosecution introducing late evidence of the drone footage. And then the drone footage they provide the defense is a compressed file version. And that's against the rules. I mean, there should be a mistrial. It should have been a mistrial when he went against the Fifth Amendment of Kyle Rittenhouse. And it should definitely be a mistrial with prejudice because they didn't give them everything that they had. That's like number one rule. You give the defense everything you have. And they didn't. They manipulated it. They were called out about manipulating it. And the judge, who should have declared a mistrial right then with prejudice, didn't, didn't do that. And then the defense lawyers come in and ask for a mistrial with prejudice which means that they could retry the case. I'm like, why would you ask for with prejudice? Even the lawyers were like, well, yeah, the def or the prosecution would probably go along with that one because then they could read to try it. If he's found guilty, all hell needs to break loose. We're going to be picked off one by one if we don't stand up. Agreed. Absolutely agreed. We're all on trial here. Absolutely every one of us. Oh, you 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 brought a gun? Well, you give up your uh, you know, your right to self-defense claim cuz you brought a gun and the guy didn't have one, you know. He was just a lot older, more muscular, been in prison, probably been in a few fights, coming after a 17-year-old. No, oh, man. This whole thing stinks. The whole thing stinks. Nobody's going to get up and do anything. We talked about this yesterday over on the other channel. Let me remind y'all. Nobody's going to do a damn thing. The founding fathers did something. For whatever reasons it was. Some say it was 2% tax. Some say it was representation or no representation. Taxation without representation. Yeah, something like that. You know. But they, they signed their name to a document saying, fuck you to King George. That they were no longer going to follow their rule. That they were becoming their own nation. Now, that's like today. Let's say we decided to tell the federal government, and this is hypothetical, tell the federal government that we've had enough. We no longer consider ourselves United States of America citizens. Uh, we are now creating our own country. We're taking this state over, whichever state that might be, and uh, we're no longer under your rule. 
And here's the big old name. Poison Stinger 2. <laughs> or my real name. Or anybody's real name. When the Founding Fathers did that, they knew by doing that that they were going to be hunted. They were giving up. If they got caught, they would be losing all their wealth and most likely their lives. And a lot of our Founding Fathers died like that. Yet they still signed it. People today in our own community who call themselves patriots, who are wanting things to light off and are hoping to get this country back and talking about how we're going to take it back, would never do that. If the founding fathers were somehow miraculously reincarnated or rose from the grave, I would say 99.9% .9 of all these people spouting the Constitution and spouting the Founding Fathers and spouting we need to take it back, when they would come up and say we're going to take it back, would say, no, 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 that's a false flag, that's a, that's a Fed, that's something, he, uh, mm -mm, not me. And we had a lot of those kind of people back in the Revolution. A lot of armchair quarterbacks. There wasn't YouTube. There wasn't social media at the time. But you can better believe there was a lot of big talkers. And not much doers. John Hancock wrote his damn name on that thing so large. He was asking for death. Come and get me if you can, motherfucker. Nobody wants to do nothing. John Hancock could come here today and ask y'all to take up arms and let's take it back. And there'd be a lot of people that wouldn't. And, it, and then they would be online bitching about how that's a false flag event. That, that's, that's definitely, I ain't going to near that. Don't go near that. Mm -mm, don't go near that. It's going to be January 6th all over again. I don't know. I don't have much faith in our communities. <laughs> Riddle? Sorry, I'm trying to check a text message. That is one thing I love about Oklahoma. We have the Make My Day Law. I like the name of it. Uh, yes, sir. If a fucker come, comes on your property, po poses a weapon of any kind, and threatens you, that's justifiable. If the if they come in your home and threaten you, it's justifiable. If they are blocking the road, it's justifiable. If they come within six feet of you and attempt to harm you, it's justifiable. Well, here in Arizona, we don't have a law called Make My Day Law. But if you're on my property without my consent, I think I don't even have to tell you. I do. I personally do. I'll give you a warning. I'll tell you to get the fuck off my property. And you better be going that way. Because if you go anywhere or you dilly-dally at all, you will be pumped full of lead. And as long as you die on my property, it's all good. But, getting back to it, no. I don't think... I think even in our own community, and I'm including myself in this, we are too comfortable where we're at. It's going to have to get extremely more uncomfortable for us before we decide to act. Way more uncomfortable than it ever was for the founding fathers who decided to say, fuck you to King George. And there were even people in those the people that signed the declaration that said, nah, this is not the right way. How many letters did they write to George asking for him to, to be nicer? Anyway. Let's do it. Like, why isn't anybody doing about this? The QAnon shaman has been sentenced to more than three years in prison. For what? For what?
Because he took an unscheduled tour of a public place? Did he hurt anybody? Might have hurt their eardrums, right, Riddle? <laughs> yeah, that was rude. But... Yeah, he is kind of a dick when it comes to that. He'll get right behind you and just start yelling. Jacob Chansley, the QAnon shaman who went... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, was sentenced Wednesday to 41 months in prison for his role. It matches the longest sentence handed down to any January 6th participant following the 41-month sentence handed down last week to Scott Fairlam, a former mixed mixed martial arts fighter who pled guilty to assaulting a police officer during the event. What you did here was horrific, Judge Royce Lambert said during the sentencing hearing. It's the type of conduct that is so serious that I cannot justify downward departure from sentencing recommendations. I cannot talk today. Chansley, who was accused of assaulting law enforcement or destroying property, pled guilty on September 3rd to one felony count of unlawful obstruction of a official proceeding. I don't believe he pled guilty to an assault of a police officer. On Wednesday, prior to sentencing, U Assistant U.S. Attorney Kimberly Fashel played social media recordings of Chansley and Senate Chamber chanting what sounded like a bizarre prayer and blowing a bullhorn. That is not peaceful, Paschal said. That is chilling. How is that not peaceful? The First Amendment. You have a First Amendment. And when it comes to speech about the government, that's the most important part of your First Amendment. So he dresses up. So he has a bullhorn. He did that here. I know he did that here. He always does that here. How was that threatening? How was... <sighs> How was that not peaceful? Chansley, who was almost unrecognizable as he addressed the court in a plain jail-issued dark green jumpsuit, said he was a good man who broke the law and implored the judge, uh, judge a tree by its roots, in considering his sentence. I'm in no way, shape, or form a violent criminal. I am not an insurrectionist. I'm certainly not a domestic terrorist, he said. I hope you see my heart. I was wrong for entering the Capitol. I have no excuse, no excuse whatsoever. In retrospect, I'd do everything differently on January 6th. I would try with all my heart and soul to stop people. I think the hardest part of this that I know that I am to blame, he added. I hope that you can see my remorse as genuine. Changely spoke confidentially as he addressed the court, making direct eye contact with Judge Lambert as he referenced the Bible and recited quotes from writer Max D. Pree, the Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, to argue that he's not the same person who stormed the Capitol. I want to grow beyond what it is that I was, Chansley said. Wow. Lambert, in response, called Chansley's remark the most remarkable I've heard in my 34 years, akin to the types of things Martin Luther King might have said. Before Chansley spoke, his attorney, Albert Watkins, addressed his client's mental health struggles that he had earlier described as significant but secret secreted vulnerabilities, hardships, and social neglect, he said. Chansley is prepared to accept his role in the insurrection. Chansley's role in that horrific day, this assault on our democracy, was repugnant, Watkins said, but he pled with the judge to consider the rest of the story, referring to his client's mental health challenges in determining a sentence. This case has not occurred in a vacuum, he said. Prosecutors called Chansley a key figure in the attack. Gotta love it. Be I knew they were going to do that, too, because he's definitely the most visual, right? He is your poster boy. The government cannot overstate the seriousness of the defendant's conduct as one of the most prominent figures in historic riot on the Capitol. Pro uh, prosecutor said, The defendant was among the first 30 participants to penetrate the U.S. Capitol building. The defendant then stalked the hallowed halls of the building, riling up other members of the mob with his screaming obscenities about our nation's lawmakers and flouting the opportunity to rid our government of those he had long considered to be traitors. Multiple videos and images show Chansley carrying his spear into the Senate chamber where prosecutors said he had led a group of event-goers in prayer on the dais and left a menacing note behind for then-Vice President Mike Pence. It's only a matter of time. Justice is coming. 
According to a brief presented to a judge in January, Chansley is a high-profile leader and a self-proclaimed shaman of QAnon. In September, Chansley's attorney said his client had rejected the QAnon conspiracy theory. Watkins argued that his client suffers from significant mental health vulnerabilities. Last week asked for a, a sentence significantly below the 51 months being sought by prosecutors. This case is about a remarkable, gentle, kind of smart, kind, smart, spiritual, nonviolent young man, Watkins said. He seeks not to be seen as a political prisoner. He seeks not to blame a former president for his action. He seeks not to justify his actions with any explanation. He seeks solely to be held accountable. Wow. If we're still in Arizona when he gets out, I, I definitely want to go and see if he does anything. They're all coming for you. You spouted things on the internet, whether in messages, comments, or on stream. Wow, what kind of re-education did they put them through? Yeah, I don't know. Why were Antifa assholes not charged? Because they're not... You, <laughs> because we do not live in a society where that matters. Understand that. Really contemplate it. It has been very apparent that there are two sets of laws. There are laws for those who go along with the government, even though they say they don't. And there are those laws that apply to us. You are a domestic terrorist, as, as am I, apparently, according to them. Not according to us, but according to them. Anything you do that they can charge you for, they will. And you will get the maximum sentence. Anything that the other side does will be swept under the rug. We're seeing that now. Of course, they have to make an example of him. Yeah, he's the face. He's the absolute face of January 6th. If anybody's going to get the most time, I'm surprised he didn't get more, to be honest. Nick Sandman is encouraging Kyle Rittenhouse to sue the media for defamation. He should also, well, I don't think you can, but I would at least attempt uh, a suit on uh, Joe Biden, right? Nick Sandman encouraged 18-year-old uh, Kyle Rittenhouse to sue media for defamation after several leftist pundits and President Biden smeared him as a white supremacist. Parallels between me and Rittenhouse are impossible not to draw, Sandman wrote. Uh, the way the media has treated you is terrible, and you don't have to face it alone. At press, pre at press time, Rittenhouse was awaiting a jury's verdict in his trial for the shooting deaths of two rioters. Yep, Rittenhouse has pled not guilty. The media, however, decided he was guilty from the get-go, Sandman pointed out. Kyle was almost immediately labeled a white supremacist and a domestic terrorist, he wrote. To many, my red MAGA hat clearly meant that I was a racist, Sandman continued. Kyle was wasn't given his day in court by his critics, and neither was I. The attacks on Kyle came from the national news media, just as they came for me. They came quickly, without hesitation, because Kyle was an easy target that they could paint in a way they wanted to. Salmon won his multi-million dollar defamation case against CNN last year after they outlet falsely portrayed him as the aggressor. Yep. He has said he hopes to become a defamation lawyer someday and hold the corporate media accountable for its lies. Well, that's good. That is good. I'm not saying it's totally not doable, but it's an uphill fight. I want to be a lawyer right now and go defamation law, help people like myself, then potentially run for office and help as many people as I best can, he said. He is enrolled at Transylvania University in Lexington, Kentucky. Huh. Snow and freezing rain tonight, and tomorrow is going to warm up to 50 to 60. Well, that's good. It'll all melt. And regardless of the outcome, the trial, I hope, written house sues for defamation. Yep. Same. Rittenhouse's trial. Police removed a man armed with a rifle from outside the courthouse. There have been protests. Uh, the first day of deliberation, it was very small. I'd say maybe 30, 40 people. 
today, I think, was larger, but I wasn't really paying attention too much. Um, and I would imagine tomorrow is going to be even more. Police officers had been seen removing a man with, armed with a rifle from outside the courthouse where the jury is deciding the fate of Rittenhouse. Pro the protester calling himself Maserati Mike was dressed in khaki body armor and carrying a rifle slung across his body and a, and a bullhorn. He was escorted away from the steps of Kenosha County Courthouse in Wisconsin on Wednesday morning and put his rifle away at the request of the officers. Video posted online by Fox News shows the man being questioned by two Kenosha County Sheriff Department officers and admitting that he had, doesn't have a valid permit to carry a concealed weapon and is within 1,000 feet of a school. The officers are seen asking the man for identification and for his permit to carry a concealed weapon. Do you have an ID or your CCW, one of the officers asked. Uh, he says, absolutely, I have ID. Do you have a valid CCW? He said, no. You are with one... You are within 1,000 feet of a school, which you cannot be with a rifle without a CCW. So apparently, in order to open carry a rifle in Wisconsin near a school, 1,000 feet, you have to have a CCW, 1,000 feet. Where can you be in 1,000 feet? That's pretty, that's pretty far. <laughs> it's funny, it was on a, near a school, not near a courthouse. So if you want to be here, you're going to have to put the rifle away. The officers then led the man to check his identification away from the group of camera crews who had gathered around. Maserati Mike had been regular fixture outside the courthouse during the trial, positioning himself with his dog and a bullhorn and shouting that Black Lives Matter is a terrorist group organization. His dog was not present with him on Wednesday. Wisconsin is an open carry state, meaning that it's legal for people aged 18 and over to carry any legal firearm openly in the state as long as they are not banned from possessing a firearm under the state and federal laws. Good fucking luck, though. Walk down a main street more than a thousand feet away from a school with an AR-15 and body armor. See if the cops don't talk to you a lot and want to see all your identification. This is why I'm saying there is there's not much hope. You might be able to slow it down if if uh, Nick Sandman goes and, and becomes that lawyer and actually helps people out. It, the, it's still going downhill. You're just slowing it down a little bit. Think about it. <clears throat> when the founding fathers, when, when we first got our, our when we first got our country, could you walk down the street with the biggest, baddest piece of military equipment. Could you Could you have a cannon? Yes, you could. Could you walk it down the street of main town, wherever? Yes, you could. Did they have a certain amount of round limit count for the Gatling guns in Massachusetts? I bet you they didn't. Could I mount a Gatling gun on the back of my horse-drawn wagon and rolled it down Main Street? I bet I could. Can you do that today? Do you think you'll ever be able to do that now? I don't think so. So, the spokesman for the Kenosha County Sheriff Department told the Independent that the armed man was taken talked to by officers and the situation was resolved. Man put away his rifle voluntarily. We did not take any further action. So there you go. Big bunch of nothing. OSHA suspends emergency emergency temporary standards on COVID vaccinations and testing for employee. I'm sorry, employers with 100 or more employees. On Thursday, November 4th, 2021, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration published an emergency temporary standard that establishes minimum COVID-19 vaccination and testing requirements for private employers with 100 or more employees throughout the United States. Shortly after the ETS was published, several states and businesses sued to declare that the rule was unconstitutional and beyond OSHA's station statutory authority. On November 6, the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals issued a very short preliminary ruling staying implementation of the ETS pending further briefing in the court. Then, on November 12th, the Fifth Circuit entered a long opinion in which it has issued a preliminary st stay of the law. 
In doing so, the court signaled that in the strongest of possible terms that it is poised to find that the rule does exceed OSHA's station, statutory authority in several ways and is unconstitutional. You can read the entirety of the opinion here. Why not? Let's do it. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I am going to grab this link for you all if you want to read it. I believe this story was brought to us by Broken Patriot, though. So there you go. Let me make sure I shout him out for that. In recognition of the court's ruling, the administration declared yesterday that OSHA has suspended all activities relating to the implementation and enforcement of the ETS pending further litigation. However, this is still a temporary ruling and will be appealed, most likely all the way to the Supreme Court, which would make the final decision. Although not expressly stated, this means that employers under the rule have a reprieve of the upcoming December 5th deadline, and likely the January 4th deadline as well, as the courts will take some time to prove much needed clarity in final decision. This week, the Florida legislator is meeting in a special session in an effort to consider legislation that would countermand at least parts of OSHA's rule. Businesses should stay tuned to see what, if any, litigation is passed by the Florida legislator and how the courts will ultimately decide on the fate of OSHA's rule and how these two will play out if the courts determine that the OSHA's rules are valid. The court's decision has no effect on vaccine mandates applying in healthcare settings or to federal contractors or subcontractors. Not saying if it works or not, YouTube. <laughs> not debating that it doesn't, but it looks like there's some uh, problems for old Joe to get his mandate in. Twitter unveils snazzy new misinformation labels, maintains some lousy censorship policies. Twitter users will soon see new warning labels on false and misleading tweets, redesigned to make them more effective and less confusing. However, it is unlikely to change the radical leftist bias that is pervasive in the social media publishing company's editorial policy, which... Conservatives in the U.S. remain highly critical of the following years of increasing aggressive censorship and double standards. They don't care. Who's going to stop them? Who? You? What are you going to do about it? They're a private company, and you, most of you, not, not you personally, most of, most of conservative people, especially those who voted for Trump and love Trump and fly the Trump flag, they, they think, well, they're a private company. They can do what they want. That would be great if they didn't have Section 230 protection. But they have Section 230 protection because they promised to be a town square freedom of speech beacon of free speech. The company also is unlikely to improve its approach on to vetting information that it deems false, which has been often validated after the fact and was the case with the Hunter Biden laptop scandal. Yeah, they always have to go back. President Trump denials of Russian collusion, allegations from the debunked steel dossier, and now widely accepted lab leak theory for Wuhan. All these things that they kept banning you for, removing the tweets, giving you a strike or whatever it is over there on Twitch, and then having to reverse it because it's overwhelming evidence. I wonder if we'll ever see overwhelming evidence of what happened last year that I get strikes for all the time. Twitter has falsely labeled such statements as facts of misinformation or has misleading contextualized them to create its own misinformation in doing so. The new labels, which the company has been testing since July, are an update from those Twitter used for supposed a that before and after then. Those two occupy a nebulous realm in which leftist propaganda has blurred the line of faction fiction. While much evidence exists to support valid suspicions of it, based on corruptions of the things that you send through the U.S. Postal Service and, lo and loosening of counting and other allegations made in the wake of it, 
cannot be supported without con or with concrete evidence. Leftists have sought to conflate the two together as a one giant conspiracy. The redesign launched worldwide on Tuesday is an attempt to make them more useful and easier to notice, among other things. Twitter only labels three types of misinformation, manipulated media, such as videos and audio that have been deceptively altered in ways that could cause real world harm, i.e. memes. We can't have those memes. Uh, of course, anything to do with the election and misleading tweets related to this COVID. The new design at Orange orange and red to the labels so they stand out more than the old version which was blue and blended in with twitter's color scheme while this can help twitter said its tests show that if a label is too eye-catching it leads to more people to retweet and reply to the original tweet yeah because you're banning it must be good Twitter said Tuesday the redesigned labels show a 17% increase in click-through rate, which means that more people clicked on the redesigned labels to read the information debunking false or misleading tweets. Misleading tweets that go sorry, misleading tweets that got the redesigned label with orange icon and the word stay informed were also less likely to be retweeted or liked than those with the original labels. Tweets with more serious misinformation, for instance, a tweet claiming that vac that yeah, will get a stronger label. Well, I have I have a sister with kids with autism, and she has an opinion on that. I'll just put it that way. Restream uscourts.gov opinions pub. What's that? Is that what I, yeah, that's what I put in. Okay. Got a lot of people listening. Uh, let's see. The Vax Nazis panic as GOP heavy Sixth Circuit chosen to hear challenge to Biden's mandate. I think this is basically what we already read. So I did have it. It just was worded differently. Connecticut parents kid say kindergartens forced to read book promoting transgenderism. I guess it's this one. He sees himself as a girl. According to West Hartfield, Connecticut, parents, teachers, and reading are reading young elementary age school children books describing transgenderism. Teachers have apparently refused to allow parents and children to opt out of the lessons. The book primarily in question is called Introducing Teddy. In the story, Thomas, a toy bear, is created as a male bear but feels repressed by gender norms and a patriarchy patriarchal heterosexual systems that reduce his sexuality. They're reading these to, to your kids? Thomas then insists that he is actually a female bear. He's supported by his friends, Errol, who doesn't care about Thomas's sex or sexual orientation in his decision to transition. The West Hartford School District has an entire social justice lesson standards guide to be used by the teachers to advance identity politics, which contains the following interactions between Thomas and Errol. Earl. In my heart, I've always known that I'm a girl Teddy and not a boy Teddy. I wish my name was Tilly, not Thomas. And Earl says, I don't care if you're a girl Teddy or a boy Teddy. What matters is that you're my friend. The guide contains a number of books designed to help teachers push children to the limits of identity politics, ensuring that they know how to classify systematic injustices and respond with appropriate affirmation. Affirmation. Erica Sanz Sanzi of Parents Defending Education said that the curriculum is obvious attempt to indoctrinate children, teaching elementary students that their parents assigned them their gender at birth, but may have gotten it wrong because of autonomy is separate from gender is an obscene example of adults using ideology to confuse and manipulate children's minds. The fact that parents are not permitted to opt their children out of this content based on gender ideology is so sinister, it's hard to believe it's even legal. And of course, they have not responded to comment. Fuck them. Uh, looks like Saki says Republicans are rooting for inflation. I doubt it. Why are Why when Americans are seeing higher prices... Are Republicans united against a bill to lower core costs on prescription drugs, health care, and child care, and elder care? They're rooting for inflation. 
Why when Americans are seeing higher prices? Why when Americans are seeing higher prices are Republican and united against a bill to lower core costs on prescription drugs, health care, child care, and elder care? They're rooting for inflation. Oddly enough, Saki also roots for, for inflation. Last month, she proclaimed that inflation is a good thing for Americans because it in indicates that consumers are buying more consumer goods. Yeah, fuck that bitch. All right, also from Discord... Apparently, they blurred out the presidential seal at a signing of uh, something. You guys see this before? This is the first time I'm seeing it. On Monday, well, it was Monday. That's probably why. Biden signed his big infrastructure bill into law. The White House has made the most of passing the $1.2 trillion bill that is touting is transformative. Yeah, I'm surprised why they blurred it out. The victory lap included Vice President Harris tweeting a video of the bill signing. The otherwise ceremonial event has been unexpectedly sparked a wave of conspiracy theories. Rumors are flying online about why the presidential seal is blurred in the video. It is strange. Hmm. There is a reasonable explanation for photoshopping the seal. It's the law. Federal law dictates that the seal cannot be used for any type of advertisement such as campaigning. Thus, the seal has to be had to be blurred because Harris tweeted the video from her personal Twitter account rather than the official vice president account. As the liberal poli uh, politician action committee Medias Touch pointed out, though he wasn't necessarily known from, for complying with the finger, the finer points of the campaign law. Former President Trump blurred the seal. It's perfectly logical if obscure reason hasn't stopped conspiracists from flooding Twitter with theories. Something's not right, tweeted one. Does he even look like Biden? Another wondered. What are they trying to hide? Interesting. So there you go. If you were wondering about that, it's because they didn't use their government Twitter account. Numerous people have even suggested the infrastructure bill signing video included a computer-generated imagery. Why did her hand go through his head, tweeted one. A large group of people appear to have mistaken a shadow of Harris' hand passing over Biden's face as an actual hand. Ooh, I want to see that one. Is that in here? Probably not. No idea. I ain't going to watch it too much. Uh, numerous people even suggested the infrastructure bill signing video included... Oh, I already read that part. Uh, what's even weirder is how the hands of the woman in the red scarf superimpose over the president's head in an obvious case of CGI. Now what? All right. So this one? Oh, the woman in red. All right. Watch the lady in red. Hmm. Who knows? I mean, he brings his head back, and that could be the shadow of Harris, I suppose. Everybody likes a good conspiracy theory. Others mark conspiracy theories about blurring of the seal. No one has ever seen the seal of the President of the United States before, tweeted this person. It must remain a secret, much like the corners of Mona Lisa's painting. Yeah. And lastly, the one from Irish USMC vet, he shared this, and I just thought it was an interesting thing. Blur because they know if he's not the legitimate president. Is that, is that your conspiracy theory, Patriot Rooster? <laughs> right on. The Lenid meteor shower. I think it's Lenid. Lenoid? Leonid. Leonid? Mm -hmm. The Leonid meteor shower will peak again tonight. Which direction should you look to see it? I didn't even know it was peaking before. So thank you to Irish for this one. Keep an eye to the sky over the next couple of days. The peak of the Lenoid meteor shower will be visible across the chilly November sky in the early morning hours. The peak of this year's Lenoid meteor shower spans several days and will be the best seen on Wednesday and Thursday. Well, that's today and tomorrow. It, the nids appear to be coming from the constellation Leo, the lion, hence their name in the east, but will, they will be visible all the way across the sky. 
Some of the greatest meteor showers ever seen have been the Lenids. In some years, they have been full-fledged meteor storm. The 1833 Lenoid meteor storm includes rates as high as an incredible 100,000 meteors per hour. The 1833 event is sometimes called the Night of the Falling Stars, or the Night the Stars Fell. According to Earth Sky, it was first recorded meteor shower storm in modern history. No such storm is expected this year, however. Another sky skeptical. The long partial lunar eclipse of this century is coming. The ideal conditions you can see 10 to 15 meteors an hour at peak of the shower, according to Earth Sky. In 2021, unfortunately, we will have to deal with a waxing gibbous moon, which will make it hard to see fainter meteors. The best time to look is just before dawn, Wednesday and Thursday after the moon has set. So whatever is right before the sun rises, go outside, watch the sun rise if you wake up that early. Also known as shooting stars, the meteors are actually leftover comet dust. They, they're pea and sand-sized bits of dust and debris crumbling off the Temple Huddle Comet as, the, as it swings by the Earth. Earth's orbit takes it straight through the debris trail. Well, that's pretty badass. That's a nice shot. The dust and debris ignite when they hit our atmosphere. They're so fast, they travel at 44 miles per second and are considered to be some of the fastest meteors out there. Here are some of the meteor shower viewing tips. Find an area well away from the city or streetlights. That ain't happening for me, but good luck to you. Come prepared for chilly weather with a sleeping bag, blanket, or lawn chair. Orient, how long are you going to stay out there? I, I would just go out there for like a few minutes, have my coffee. Come pre uh, orientate yourself with your feet towards the east, lie flat on your back, and look up taking in as much of the sky as possible. In less than 30 minutes in the dark, your eyes will adapt and you'll begin to see meteors. Be patient. The show will last until dawn, so you have plenty of time to catch a glimpse. Depending on if it's raining or not, or snowing or not as well. Because I can't imagine Gerald out there in the freaking cold in, in Maine dealing with that. Also, I don't know if he's in the chat tonight, but Zeus had sent us a video of him singing. If you don't know who Zeus is, I'm going to send you all the link. If you are here and you have subscribed to this channel, I would kindly ask you to go subscribe to Zeus. He's got a great channel. Uh, they're starting up their little homestead. I believe it's in Texas. Is it Texas? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, from the few videos that I've seen, I really like it. And uh, we had seen him. I think you had... He was, was he singing or just playing the guitar? Guitar. Yeah. Singing. Well, I know this video is. The other one was both also. No, oh, was it? Mm -hmm. Uh, Let's see if I still have that video open because I'd like to watch it. No, I think I closed it out. I'm not even sure if... Yeah, I don't even think... I think it's a private video, right? Oh, no, it's not. No, it's not. Here it is. It was two weeks ago. So it's going to be tonight's closing um, song for one. And for two, I'd like you to all go sub. All right, let me go back to this. You can just look out the windows. Can't you can't hear the song. Fuck. Why not? Let me just check. I noticed that too, just as he said it. Uh, messed around with too many things on OBS and can't figure it out anymore. Let's see. Properties. There we go. Got it. Someone lay in the dark mm -hmm. 
All right, I'm going to leave it there because it's going to be the closing song anyway. But go check out Zeus, subscribe to him, and uh, watch some of his videos, man. He's got some good content. So anyway, that's going to do it for us here. Make sure you check out all the descriptions down in the, all the links down in the descriptions below, all the causes I believe in and support, all the ways to help the channel with money if you want to do that. Uh, all the Amazon links of the things that I have bought from Amazon and personally recommend, including the pickle pipes and pebbles, which seem to be working now, which is great. Uh, all the different ways to follow the channel so far. Uh, the channel will be changing. We will not be doing news related topics soon. What I replace it with, I do not know. If you have any ideas, please voice them in the Discord. Don't forget to follow me in the Discord if you're not already. I know most of you are in the Discord, but open it up and uh, hit me up and say, hey, I think you should talk about something like this or something. I don't know. But I want to get away from the news. I want to get away from the COVID and I want to get away from the election of last year. I'm done. I'm done. Right. Tap me out. Am I leaving YouTube? No, I'm not leaving YouTube. But at the same time, I'm going to stop fighting an unwinnable battle. I will join the lawsuit and do all that. But as far, I mean, we all know what we think already. I don't need, I don't need to tell you about last year's event in November. I don't. You either believe it or you don't. I'm not going to convince anybody new. They're, they've already decided one way or the other. And the same thing with COVID. Right. You either believe everything they say or you don't. And it's up to you. So every time I talk about it, I'm not convincing you of anything else that you don't already believe. And I'm just getting in trouble for it. So. If I was reaching new people, if I was changing minds. It'd be different, but I'm not. So let's do something else. Or, or do I just continue, you know, the, the other idea is maybe I just continue doing the new stuff, but I just don't do stories of COVID or elections. That could be a thing. I don't know. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Make sure to leave a like. Share it. Sharing the video is actually better than giving me money. Just so you know, like if, if you think that I'm asking for money, no, that's there for people that want to donate money and if you do donate just know 50 percent goes to rally point irish which you probably already do uh which is in the causes i believe in and support and if you don't know why please ask because you know it's a whole spiel but uh i'd like to see that done so that's why i donate 50 percent of any income that comes in here to rally point irish but check that out how about we have all should have a dylan press instead of a single stage press i have both i have a dylan and a single stage i have I have the Dylan XL650, which isn't the best one that they do, but it's like the second best is last time I checked. And then I have the Lee single stage, like $20 one. <laughs> and I use that for like working up a load. It's easier to be more precise if you're doing it one at a time. And it's just more convenient than setting up a whole turret of dies. You know what I mean? Anyway reloading's cool i haven't done reloading in a while because primers dude i can't i have a few thousand but i don't want to get rid of them i'm i'm if primers ever come back i am stocking the fuck up i'm just saying and anytime that i've gone to a gun show every once in a while they have primers they were selling them for like 
I think $30 a pack. No, no, no. Sorry. It was like $25 a pack of 100 $25. It used to be 3 bucks. I ain't paying no $25 a pack. I found some guy selling uh, a new company was making them. And he was selling them for $12 a pack. And I was like, yeah, I'll buy a couple hundred of those. And it hurt. It hurt to pay four times the amount that I was used to paying. But I paid it. And I bought me a couple hundred of those. Or I think I thought I think I bought a thousand of them. So yeah. and that was a lot of money. A thousand that was one hundred and twenty dollars. One hundred and twenty bucks to buy a thousand primers where it used to be thirty bucks. So, yeah. Anyway, I'm out of here until I see you tomorrow. Make sure to keep that family close. Watch out for that government. Try to live as free as you can. And uh, remember, Friday will probably be the last catch up like this either will continue but not do stories about election or or uh covid or we'll just do something else and I, it'll probably be once a week but make sure you're part of the discord and start sharing stuff over there open it up once in a while hit me up i'll talk to you later peace Oh, mm -hmm.